Yes, Grucky. Mm, quiet. Yeah, it's a little bit better. Still kind of quiet. So I'm on time. Yeah, maybe five minutes earlier than our usual time. Which is usually a half hour before our other usual time. I think I feed you later in the summer because it gets so hot. <clears throat> and then there's all that stupid daylight savings times stuff. Okay, so I have a new can of real chicken and tuna and kibble. And I saw you sleeping on the chair again, so I didn't bring out your water. So I gotta do that now. So we're gonna move so I can bring out the food, or you're just gonna sit there. So, yeah, daylight savings time is weird. I've been ignoring it with Scruffy. So I have a clock. <clears throat> that I keep in the kitchen, and normally I'd reset it for daylight savings time, but uh, after I started feeding Scruffy, I realized he doesn't know anything about daylight savings time. So I decided to keep that clock unchanged, so I always feed Scruffy by that clock. It actually confuses me sometimes, but since I don't change that clock, it was kind of keeps me oriented. So I've been feeding Scruffy at roughly the same time, but that's why there's like this half hour discrepancy. Sometimes, like when it gets later in the summer, I'll feed him a half hour later than now. Okay. So Ready for pets? It's arching his back. Uh oh. But he's gonna hiss there. Not sure if he was hissing or if that was a just a large air intake. He's really close to my chair here, so it's hard to maneuver. I think he really wants the pets. I think I may have confused him a little bit too. So the mat is probably under the chair because I think I bumped the chair the other day, which shifted it. And I think maybe he likes walking on the mat. So maybe I need to move the chair back so I have more room in the future. Yeah, so you stand on the mat right now. <sighs> so, I had another kind of busy day. So, <clears throat> didn't really have any time pressure today, so I finally opened up the TurboTax package and installed it, or one of them anyway. So, officially, finally starting my taxes. But I got a long, long way to go. And I don't know if all the documents I need are available yet, but I know a bunch of them are starting to become available, so <clears throat> I might actually be able to do my taxes now completely, but I'll find out. But yeah, I've never used TurboTax all the way through. I've looked at the program before just to figure out if it would actually be useful to me in the past, and in the past, the problem was my taxes were 
just complicated enough that TurboTax actually can't do everything. And so I was perfectly content keeping my uh, tax guy. But my tax guy just retired, so I don't have him anymore. I just had to sit on my leg there for a second. So without my tax guy, I basically am screwed and I gotta figure out how to do my taxes. So I actually did look for a new tax person and I thought I looked early, I started looking early enough. <clears throat> but um, everyone I contacted kept saying, yeah, I don't have a space to take on new clients right now. And then as uh, I continued researching more people and sending out more inquiries, I kept getting the same message. <laughs> and then eventually, you know, it's gotten to the point where, okay, now I understand you can't take on new clients because yeah, now we're starting to really run out of time. But yeah, I was surprised that when I started, I was getting that response. And they basically, <clears throat> I think I found one firm that would take me on, but it was going to cost me an arm and a leg. Because, <clears throat> um, you know, TurboTax cost me a couple hundred dollars. They wanted to charge me. <coughs> Sorry, that was my coughing. Sorry. <coughs> okay, yeah, I had a cough. Yeah. Scrub is not used to me coughing or sneezing. Well, you see me cough before and sneeze. So anyway, <clears throat> I got quoted, I think, about $4,000-ish, possibly more, and I don't make that much, so <laughs> um, <clears throat> that's kind of obscene. But yeah, it's just, I have some complicated forms. They don't make me any money. They're just, just complicated forms the IRS wants. <clears throat> uh, so anyway. Decided, well, I guess I'll take the chance. I actually do probably know the tax code more than most people, so <clears throat> I have some friends who ask me, why do I have a tax guy? You seem to know everything. <laughs> I said, well, I don't know everything, and I know enough that I probably want a tax guy, but <clears throat> my tax guy was actually relatively cheap compared to, especially the way that yeah, I just got quoted, so yeah, he cost me more in TurboTax, but not that much more, so I thought it was pretty reasonable. I mean, <clears throat> he had, or well, he didn't actually handle all my complicated forms, but he at least <clears throat> said if I did the complicated forms myself, um, he could then attach it with the rest of my tax return. I said, okay, good enough. So now with TurboTax, the problem is that they don't do those forms, so I'm going to have to basically also attach the forms myself. <clears throat> so I'm gonna, I still have to do the forms myself and then attach them. Um, I actually don't know if there are formal rules about how you attach things. I'm just going to be copying what my tax guy did in the past. <clears throat> Though he had a template, um, so one there's like one form that's like a very free form. It's like there's no actual form the IRS creates for this. You can't just fill it out. You actually have to like fill this out by hand. 
and I don't know if there's a special template the IRS wants. <clears throat> um, he had some sort of template that he used, so I'm going to try to copy it, but his is actually kind of fancy, and I don't think I'm going to try that hard. <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully the IRS won't punish me for that. <clears throat> I don't, yeah, that uh, that form, I don't think I could reproduce as fancy as his. Not without a lot of time. I'm not a graphic artist. Uh, well, I think Scruffy's ready for his food, huh? It's pretty calm now. <clears throat> Didn't like me coughing. But I think he's better now. Okay, let's get your food. So it's a fresh can of uh, cat food, so I poured on all the extra grease in there. So it should be nice and tasty. Whoops, off the chair again. I think it's pretty good. <clears throat> so it doesn't look like he's flea infested. <clears throat> so, yeah, once again, let's see. Early this morning, I saw Scruffy on the rocks. So the weather continues to be kind of on the cool side again. So we've lost 15, 20 degrees from the unseasonably warm weather we had a few days to a week ago. <clears throat> so now it's back to kind of cold, though it's not quite as cold as it was. So it's a little bit warmer, but yeah, we did lose quite a bit of temperature just because, yeah, it, the temperature increased so much. So <clears throat> I'm chilly again in the morning. So I saw Scruffy on the rocks, sunbathing, didn't get any footage, didn't have my camera. Then, let's see you later, I saw Scruffy back on the orange chair sleeping. So that was, I think, mid-morning. And then, I think, late morning, he was gone. I don't know where he went. I was actually thinking maybe I should bring out the water then, but it was still a little early. <clears throat> so I said, nah, I'll just do it at the normal lunchtime. And then around lunchtime, I saw him sleeping on the chair again. And then I said, eh, well, he's sleeping. I don't want to wake him. And yeah, he pretty much stayed uh, on the chair all afternoon until about an hour and a half before dinner when I saw him on the gray mat sleeping. So I didn't feel like waking him. So, <clears throat> so once again, I didn't bring out the water. I'm actually surprised he didn't drink it last night, so maybe he doesn't care. So I went for a run today, and once again it was another horrible run. <clears throat> this time I actually got a cramp early on in the first lap. So. Yeah, I haven't had a cramp in a while. So it's funny that, yeah, this time I got a cramp, but yeah, the previous times I didn't. So. <clears throat> yeah, it was a pretty bad run today. So I think I actually did worse today than I had done since I restarted uh, a couple weeks ago or whatever it was. With the exception as yeah, I don't, I don't have the runner's itch anymore, so that's good at least. And today I did do three laps again, uh, but again, it was alternating walking and running. <clears throat> Let's see, on the way there I saw, I think I saw the porch cat, but he was not on the porch like he normally is. I saw him, I think, in the street, on the other side of the street, and then walking into somebody else's yard. 
And at first I didn't think it was Porch Cat because I've never seen Porch Cat do that before because he's always hanging out in front of that same house and that, always hanging out on the same porch. <clears throat> and so when I saw there was another cat walking um, in the street in some front of some other houses, I thought maybe it was the friendly cat because I've seen the friendly cat do that at those houses before. <clears throat> but as I got closer, I said, no, that doesn't look like the friendly cat. The coloring's a little off. And then I said that coloring actually looks more on the front, uh, porch cat. And then he uh, ran, in, ran in somebody's yard and kind of took cover in some bushes, so I lost sight of him. And then, and let's see. <clears throat> Yeah, I didn't actually see any other cats at the park. Though I saw, when I came back from the park, uh, I saw Porch Cat in this normal place. So it probably was Porch Cat that I saw. So maybe, yeah, when I don't see Porch Cat there, that's what he's actually doing. And I just happened to see him for once. <clears throat> and then, oh, I saw one of the white cats again hanging out uh, in my neighbor's yard. I haven't seen the white cat in a while. There are, there are two white cats, I haven't seen either of them in a while. And let's see, at the park, uh, there was one one small dog uh, that a couple was walking, and the dog wasn't on a leash, but it had like a vest that I guess you could tie a leash to. But the vest, yeah, also had a sign on it it said, like, do not pet. <laughs> and so I thought it was kind of funny seeing that because <clears throat> um, I don't know. So to me, it seems like yeah, that implies the dog's dangerous, but if the dog's dangerous, why don't you put him on a leash? But I don't know. Anyway, <clears throat> yeah, so the dog was just walking kind of, you know, by itself and seemed obedient. It, you know, wasn't running too far ahead of the people. And yeah, the dog didn't seem ill tempered, though I didn't try to pet it. So. But yeah, I thought that was kind of interesting. And then there was another dog that was walking behind, or behind me. Um, actually, this was yesterday, sorry. Um, so it was on my walk. I think it was yesterday, or maybe it was a couple days ago. I can't even remember. <clears throat> so there was a sm smaller dog, a little larger than the other one. It's a white dog with, I think, like a patch eye. I've seen these dogs used as mascots for different companies. <clears throat> um, like, uh, I'm trying to remember. There's a couple, a couple different companies, I think, that use this type of dog. I remember there was Spuds McKenzie a long time ago, <clears throat> and I thought there's more recent uh, use of this kind of dog. So I forgot what kind of dog. You see, there was like this famous old commercial or ad where some small dog is tugging on some like girl's diaper or something like that. <clears throat> you know, that one's really old. I can't remember if that's, that's the same type of dog. <clears throat> anyway, yeah, so there's this dog uh, on a leash walking directly behind me, and the leash is pretty long. Um, but yeah, the dog was kind of like getting my, near my heels, and yeah, I was wondering if the dog was going to try to like, sniff my heels or jump up my leg or something because he was so close to me. But the, the owner had him, uh, you know, on the leash, so he wasn't going to jump up on me, but um, that's assuming I kept my distance. Um, so after a while, um, the owner and the dog actually at one point overtook me, so <clears throat> um, the dog actually started running past me. And it looked like the dog got excited because I think they were getting back to their car and the car was on the street and as I was passing it. 
So they <clears throat> ran past me to get into the car, I guess. So the dog wasn't uh, trying to knit my heels. I think I need some water. I feel like I need to cough again. So I probably need to go in after uh, Scruffy finishes here. So I'll probably stop, start coughing again if I don't. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not sure what brought on that cough. Just probably just need some water. So it looks like Scruffy did a good job cleaning the bowl. I think with all the grease and the fact that the food isn't cold, it probably is easier to eat. And he's drinking the water for once. So I did put in a little extra kibble again. But I think I put in so much, actually. I took some out, but I think I still ended up with, like, net uh, too much. <clears throat> I haven't seen Scruffy take a drink in a few days, so I thought he's doing that. So I'm just checking the ball, but yeah, he's coming back now that I checked it. So yeah, there's no 38 at all, I guess. It's just small little smear. Yeah, he ate it. If it's a small smear, you can lick it. But, yeah. If you're not going to, I'm going to go in. There's also some stuck to the balls, I think. But, yeah, he's kind of inconsistent about licking the balls. Sometimes he cleans them, sometimes he just ignores them. Scruffy's leaving. Yep. Okay, folks. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.